It's amazing how much emotion can be conveyed in a simple touch. When you're down and out, something as simple as a hand on the shoulder, a hug, or quietly holding hands can have a profound effect. And 20 years ago, a simple touch carried with it a huge miracle for twin sisters, Kyrie and Brielle. Love is the greatest force that exists, capable of healing everything. Miracles happen when you're ready to accept them. In fact, everything comes true when you're ready to accept it. Let's talk about the power of love. Love is very powerful, that sometimes it can create a miracle to save us. Medical experts believe that human touch and affection can save lives, and this was proven to be true when it saved the life of a premature baby in the United States. When Heidi and Paul Jackson found out they were expecting a baby, the young couple from Massachusetts was jubilant. They prayed hard for it. They were excited to build their family, and the good news came in perfect timing. Just when Heidi and Paul thought they couldn't ask for more, the doctors told them that Heidi was carrying twins. The couple's excitement had grown double. However, when Heidi reached the second term of her pregnancy, something unexpected happened. It left them feeling lost and confused. The parents-to-be had no idea that the chain of events that followed suit will leave the whole world in awe. In the fall of 1995, two twin girls were prematurely born, weighing in at just two pounds. Brielle and Kyrie Jackson of Westminster, Massachusetts, spent their first few weeks fighting for their lives in separate incubators. Kyrie was the stronger one of the twins. At three ounces heavier, she seemed to be thriving in the incubator, while Brielle struggled to survive. At one point, Brielle's breathing became shallow and her heart rate dropped drastically. The doctors tried everything they could, but nothing seemed to work. But before it was too late, a quick-thinking nurse decided to put the two babies in the same incubator. This was a move that had never been done in the U.S., but something incredible happened. As soon as Kyrie was placed next to her sister, she reached over and placed her arm around Brielle's body. Suddenly, Brielle's heart stabilized and her temperature returned to normal. Paul was ecstatic when he found out that he's going to be a dad. He always heard in the past that it was one of the best feelings ever, and he finally experienced it himself. He kissed and hugged his wife, Heidi, for giving him such a wonderful gift. They even had an early celebration. Before they called it a night, they talked about their plans, how many kids to have, where they'd live, and more. They also agreed that they'd see a doctor together to check on her condition. In 1995, Brielle and Kyrie Jackson spent their first few weeks in separate incubators, fighting for their lives. Brielle's breathing became shallow and her heart rate dropped drastically. Miraculously, a quick-thinking nurse decided to put the two in the same incubator. Kyrie immediately reached over and put her arm around her. Brielle's heart stabilized and her temperature returned to normal. The Jackson couple went to the Medical Center of Central Massachusetts Memorial for confirmation. Heidi underwent the usual pregnancy examination tests. After the necessary procedures, the OB gynecologist was smiling from ear to ear. Paul was holding Heidi's hand when the good news was announced. Indeed, Heidi was pregnant. However, that wasn't the rest of it. The Jackson couple thought that nothing could be better than knowing they're about to be parents, but it seemed that there was. The doctor confirmed that Heidi was not only carrying one baby, but she had twins. The night before, they were talking about the gender of the baby and what to name it, and then, like a quick stroke of luck, it turned out they were expecting twins. From two, they'll become four in a family real quick. Paul and Heidi were delighted and grateful at the double blessing. The doctor congratulated them. However, there was a lot to keep in mind. They were told that multiple births usually don't carry full term. They need to be extra careful. Heidi was advised to follow her checkup schedules. Paul listened to the medical expert, as well about the necessary measures and precautions. More than ever, he knew he had to take care of his wife. Heidi and Paul's respective families shared the same excitement. They were all happy to know that they were expecting twins. Even their neighbors and their little community were glad to hear the news. Since Heidi was advised not to do tedious works, the couple decided to move back to Paul's family so that Heidi would have company whenever he's away from work. Like a tightly bonded family would, everybody around them did everything to ensure that Heidi would have a healthy pregnancy. The first trimester went smoothly. Paul was always with Heidi during her checkups. Her family and friends visited her from time to time, and they brought her fruits and other healthy food. Almost every day, Heidi tried to widen her knowledge about conceiving twins. She also asked her friends about it. They strictly followed the doctor's advice and felt confident that nothing would go wrong. However, six months into her pregnancy, all their efforts seemed to go in vain. Heidi had been given a due date of January 1996. 
The couple thought they'd be celebrating the last Christmas holidays as husband and wife. Heidi was committed to her pregnancy regimen as well. But one day, in mid-October, she woke up feeling heavy. Her tummy and back were in extreme pain. She had no idea why it happened, but she knew she had to see the doctor. Heidi called her husband to tell him that something was wrong. She did have back pains in the past, but was sure it had gone severe that morning. Paul rushed home to check on his wife. When he saw Heidi's condition, he didn't have second thoughts. He prepared the things that they would need, and then Heidi was taken to the hospital. Although the doctor had told them in the past that multiple births don't usually carry to full term, the Jackson couple knew that six months were way too early. They were both shaken. Upon checking Heidi and the twins' condition, the doctors at the Central Massachusetts Medical Center had no choice but to prepare Heidi for early delivery. Usually, premature babies are delivered at seven months, with the medical experts exerting extra effort to delay the delivery. In Heidi's case, there's still 12 weeks to go before her due date, but the babies were already on their way. The only option left was to perform a C-section. Paul and his family waited patiently and nervously outside the operating room. Every one of them feared the worst. However, they knew they had to trust the doctors. He knew Heidi would fight as well. In his mind, he talked to his twin babies and asked them to hold on. He was tensed and nervous. From time to time, he'd look at the door, hoping to see the doctors. Every second felt like eternity. Finally, the operation was over. The doctors told Paul that it was a successful one. However, there were lots of things to do. The twins weighed only two pounds each, a far cry from the usual weight of a healthy newborn baby, which falls around six to ten pounds. Luckily for them, the twins weren't as weak as expected. Dr. Stuart Weisberger and the rest of the medical staff at the neonatal intensive care unit of the hospital ensured the Jackson family that they'd provide the best possible care for the babies. Heidi was taken to the recovery room while the newborn twins were put in infant incubators. Heidi and Paul named their twins Kyrie and Brielle. The tiny babies looked like angels, and they knew they'd get stronger and better. Following the hospital's standard protocol, Kyrie and Brielle were placed in separate incubators. It was imperative as premature babies are always a higher risk of infection than those who had entirely developed in the womb. The infant incubators had provided the warmth needed by the twins. A medical team had been assigned to monitor the condition of the premature babies. It was such a crucial time for the Jackson family. When Heidi regained her strength, she never left her babies in the hospital. Somehow, she knew they needed her caring. Although Heidi and Paul still couldn't understand what went wrong, they decided to shake off the subject. It wasn't important anymore. What mattered most to them was the safety of their little darlings. Following Heidi's delivery, the Jackson family became a familiar scene at the hospital. Heidi and the team of medical staff assigned at the NICU soon became friends. They were nice to her and the babies. However, they were also sincere and honest. They told the new parents that while things can look pretty good at a particular moment, there's a chance things would turn so quickly. And as if faith had turned its back on them, their worst fear had happened. Of the Jackson twins, it was Kyrie who showed signs of quick recovery. She weighed two pounds, three ounces at the time of birth and was slightly bigger than Brielle. It seemed that Kyrie's tiny body had learned to adapt to the infant incubator faster than her twin sister did. While Kyrie was doing well and showing signs of quick recovery, the same thing can't be said about Brielle. She was the smaller twin, and right after birth, the doctors had to put her on a respirator. The medical team had to monitor her condition almost all the time. On November 12th, the Jacksons received devastating news from the doctors. The twins, who were just 23 days old, showed contradictory results in recovery. On that day, Brielle's condition had worsened. She struggled to breathe, and the doctors found out that she had low levels of oxygen in her blood. Her body began to turn bluish out of crying. Brielle also had hiccups, a clear sign that her condition had gotten critical. Among the medical team at the NICU, who became firmly attached to the Jackson twins, was Nurse Gail Kasparian. Since day one, she'd been assigned to monitor the condition of the premature babies. Despite the tension inside the neonatal intensive care unit, Gail knew she had to think fast. She saw fear on the new parents' faces as they scrambled to save the weaker twin. The tiny angel had already made it far, and she was confident that she could make it through. At the moment the dying baby was saved by her sister, a photojournalist happened to be at the hospital and snapped a picture. His photo of the rescue hug became a worldwide sensation and highlighted the healing power of touch. It's now 20 years later, and the twins are all grown up, though they remain closer than ever. 
They'll randomly Google their story and remind themselves of the power they've had on the medical and parenting communities. The simple, quick-thinking move made by the nurse was something that not only saved a life, but showed the medical community the profound impact a single touch can have on someone. The power of touch is an incredible thing. Thank God the photographer was there that day to capture the historic moment. If you agree, please share this with your friends on Facebook. Thanks for watching. Please like and share the video in social networks. We'll be right back to you as fast as we can.